Hey everyone, in this video, I'll show you how to animate Donnie breaking out of his egg. We'll create all the animations with groups, a scale constraint, and some custom draw orders. After that, we'll tie it all together with the state machine. There's a link to the source file in the video description if you'd like to follow along. With that being said, let's get cracking. So before we start diving too deep into the hierarchy, I want to show you the sketch first so that um, when we're talking about the hierarchy, you understand how I came to the idea of creating things the way that I did. So here's the sketch and obviously it's, it's relatively rough, but it gives me all the pieces that I need. So here's our character. And as I drew the character, it started informing me about some of the pieces that I needed to make. And uh, it allowed me to ask some questions like, how am I going to get the character into this position? So underneath the character, I started sketching out some of the um, main poses that I wanted to create. So I know that I need a full egg because I want the full egg to squash and stretch and I want it to break open later. So I'm going to need a full egg. I'm going to need it to allow it to squash and stretch. I'm going to need a broken egg so that I can um, have Donnie push the egg off of himself. And obviously that's what's going to be cracking the egg open is he's going to kick it off of himself. So we need we need to make a uh, back for the character that we can slide up and down. We need his feet front and back. And you can see his heads poking out here. So this is the first um, main pose in the egg breaking animation. And then we'll want the character to slide into position. Um, so I know that this is going to move down and then his body is going to slide up and then obviously his legs will be visible as well as his hand. So now that we've looked at the sketch and we've sort of seen the pieces that I need to create, let's hop into the editor and look at the hierarchy and all of the different pieces. Okay. So here we are in the editor and as you can see, all of my groups are nested under a uh, root group as always. Now below that, we have a couple different groups here. We've got the full egg group, which is what's displayed on screen right now. And that's just the artwork for the egg in its full state. And then we have a cracked egg group. And if we expand that, um, you can see that we have an egg top and an egg bottom. So the egg top is the top of the egg, obviously, and it's going to be the piece that flies off. And the egg bottom, if we expand that, contains all the artwork for Donnie. So we've got his back here, and this is the piece that's going to actually push the um, egg off the top of him. And we've got his feet. We've got Donnie, the character. So this is his head and a little bit of his body here. And then if you expand that, we have his eyes open and closed. Okay, so we'll use that for a blinking animation. We've got his hand. And um, so that's it for the character artwork. Now, we also have a couple other um, groups here. We've got the back shadow, which is going to be the shadow for this piece of the egg as it flies over and drops down to the ground. We have a shadow group. And then we have this scale target. Now, what the scale target is, is it is the target for my scale constraints, which I put on um, the full egg group and the egg top and egg bottom group. And that's so I can scale all of those pieces at the same time. So when we're squashing and stretching the egg and it's together, I don't have to make three separate keys. I can just make keys um, with the scale uh, target um, using scale constraints. And I only need um, one key instead of the three, like I said before. Now, there's one other thing I want to take a look at, and that is on the egg top. Now, for this, I've added a custom draw order, and I, I intend to animate with this. So the normal draw rule has this egg top in front of the character. Now, when it flies above the character, I want to be able to change the draw rule so to my custom draw rule here. And you can see that now the top of the egg is actually behind the character. Now, I may do a video on how to set that up later, but we won't go into that in this video. So now that we've looked at the um, the hierarchy, if you're not quite understanding the hierarchy and how it works, uh, I would recommend downloading the file, playing around with it for yourself and um, looking into the uh, help center documentation on uh, parent child relationships. And I'll link that document in the video description. So now that we've gone over the hierarchy, let's hop into animate mode and get this guy animated. 
Okay, so here we are in animate mode, and what we're going to be doing is making three separate animations. We're going to make an intro idle animation where the egg is sort of twitching, and it's sort of preparing you for the next animation where the egg actually cracks open, and that'll be the second animation where we crack the egg open and Donnie's exposed, and he comes down and sort of rocks into position. And then the third animation that we're going to be making is an um, egg open animation where the egg continues to rock back and forth as if Donnie's sort of sitting in a rocking chair and rocking back and forth. So let's start with the um, intro idle. So I'm just going to rename the animation intro idle. And because it's an idle animation, I'm going to set it to loop. And then I'm going to give myself a little bit of extra room. So instead of one second, we'll give ourselves, let's say, three seconds, maybe. If we need some more time later, we can do that. And the first thing I'm going to do for this animation is go through and set up uh, opacity keys so that the artwork looks how I want it. So we don't need the cracked egg group in this initial animation. So I'm going to turn its opacity down to zero. We don't need the back shadow. So I'm going to turn its opacity down to zero. And the full egg, I'm going to go ahead and set its opacity to 100%. Now, the reason I'm setting an opacity key for the cracked egg is if we ever wanted to make a resetting state where the um, state machine goes back to this original state, um, it will make sure that um, the, the, the full egg can return to 100% opacity. Um, so now that we have all the opacity set up, let's go ahead and start animating um, the egg moving. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a squash and stretch animation. So I'm just going to go ahead and set um, the initial, uh, ooh, not on the full egg. I'm actually going to use the scale target here and set an initial scale. So the 100%. And move it forward, probably 30F here. And squash it out. Squash it down. Now, one thing to keep in mind when you're making squashing and stretching animations, or you're squashing and stretching anything, is that you want to keep the volume of the artwork the same. So if I stretch it out 20% in the Y or the X direction, I want to squash it 20% in the Y. I'm going to do the same thing, uh, move it forward here, and now I'm going to stretch it upwards. I think we're only going to go 10% there. Okay. And then I'm going to return it to its original scale, just like so. All right, I'm going to set cubic easing on that. Let's see what that looks like. All right, it's a little too slow. So I'm going to actually um, change this to where each key falls on a 15 here. Let's look at that. Okay, that looks pretty good. And it's going to go to three and then come back. Perfect. All right. So instead of just having it squash and stretch, let's also have it shake back and forth. So instead of setting it on the scale target, now we're going to grab the full egg, set the initial rotation value. And then we can go, let's see, we'll go one direction with it this way, this way, and then let's go back to the initial rotation value here. Apply easing to all of that, and let's take a look. That looks okay, maybe, maybe we just offset these keys just a little bit more. All right, I'm just adjusting the timing just a little bit, and that looks pretty good. So now that we have um, this animation, let's go ahead and add a new animation and start uh, getting Donnie out of his egg. So I'm going to add a new animation, and we'll call this animation um, Egg Open. All right, and let's do the same thing we did before. Let's go through and set all of our opacity keys get the artwork looking right. So we want this at 100. The cracked egg we don't need quite yet. And there we go. Okay, so now what we're going to we're going to start this animation, break it down into a couple different pieces. So the egg is going to squash and stretch and rotate. Um, we won't add the rotation in yet, but it'll start by squashing and stretching 
and it'll continuously get faster until it finally pops that egg piece off. Donnie's going to slide into position. So the egg popping and Donnie sliding into position is the second part of the animation. And then the final bit of the animation is actually having the egg rock back and forth um, until it um, starts rocking at a constant pace. So let's start by uh, squashing and stretching the um, egg first. Now, um, we don't have quite enough time on the timeline, so I'm going to go ahead and stretch this out and give it... I'm going to give myself six seconds to work with. Now, instead of instead of having it start um, as fast as we did with the intro idle, I'm going to actually have it start by squashing and stretching every one second. So I'm going to just squash it down really quickly. Like so. Oh, I need to set an initial scale key. Let me go back to the beginning of the timeline and do that. Okay. All right, let's have it stretch up. Uh, so 90 and 110 here. All right. Make sure that's actually at two. And one of the problems with working with the timeline zoomed out that far is you can't... Qu it's sometimes hard to get your keys in the exact uh, position and time that you want. Okay, that's looking pretty good. We'll add easing in a second. All right, now let's cut this time in half. Have it squash down at 30. I'm just going to copy and paste that. And then at three seconds, copy and paste the stretch up key. And then we'll do it every 15 here. After that. And uh, we need to go to 30 here, I believe. Yep. Okay, so now that we have the squashing and stretching going, let's add easing to that. So I'm just going to select them all and apply cubic easing and take a look. Okay, that's pretty good. The only thing that I don't like is that this motion right here is not quite uh, explosive enough because that egg is going to pop open. So we want to uh, change the easing on that. Before we do that, I'm, I'm going to return the egg to its original um, its original scale. Let's see what that looks like really quickly. It doesn't quite happen fast enough. And it doesn't, it's not quite squashed enough. So let's or stretched enough. I'm going to stretch it a little bit more for this pose here. So that that's a bit more noticeable. Okay. So let's have this be a little bit more explosive. So I'm going to just go ahead and give it a lot more ease in and a lot more ease out so that the change is almost instantaneous. Yeah. You see how much more explosive that looks? All right, and instead of it uh, using the the standard easing curve on the next key, I'm gonna give it some more ease in, so that it lingers in this position a little bit longer. And maybe too much. Yeah, this is just taking too long to come back. So let me scoot this down a little bit. All right, now we can give this key a little more ease in. Okay. That looks pretty decent. Actually, instead of just having it return to its, its original um, scale, I'm going to scale it out or squash it just a little bit and then return it to its original scale. And we'll see if that makes it look a little bit better. Okay. Okay. So that's pretty nice. Now what we want to do is identify where we want 
to change this full egg out for the cracked egg. And by by that, I mean just uh, turning the opacity for the full egg off and the cracked egg on. So I think right about here, where it's really stretched up, is where we want to do that. So I'm going to set a opacity key here for zero. Go to the cracked egg, set an opacity key for 100. And let's take a look at that really quick. Now you can see that um, the uh, artwork is slowly changing and we don't want that to happen. What we want is both of these to hold their value until here and then instantly switch. So what we're gonna do is open up the cracked egg and full egg, select the opacity keys and change the um, interpolation from linear to hold. Now what hold is gonna do is hold those initial values until the next value. So right here and then it switches and you can see that that is an instantaneous switch and it doesn't even look like, um, there's no fading or anything. So it looks like they're, it's the same egg, it's just now cracked. Okay, so now that we have that, what we can do is start by animating the um, top of the egg to go flying off. Now, obviously, um, the artwork for Donnie is not right, but I'm going to start by animating this piece, and then we'll go in and get um, Donnie. So let's just focus on one thing at a time. So let me grab the egg top group here. And where it switches over, I'm going to go ahead and just position that in the correct spot. So right there. And now where it's stretched up to its highest point, let's have it fly up into the air and we can have it leave the uh, artboard. If we want, we could expand the artboard to show this, but I think it's okay. All right. And then it's going to come down and hit the ground like so. And then bounce a little bit, just come right off the ground, and then go back down to the original spot, like so. All right, and then I'm going to give it all cubic cur or cubic easing. And right now, I'm just focusing on the Y, and then we can focus on the X later. Okay, so that's happening a little. This actually needs to move a little quicker. We might be able to drag these out just a hair. We want to keep this bounce kind of short. All right, let's take a look at that. I'm not quite moving as quickly as I'd want it to. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now I want it to linger in the air just a little bit longer. So I'm going to give this second Y key here just a little more ease in. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now that we have the um, Y position figured out, let's get the X going. So I'm gonna key the initial, uh, initial X value, pan over here to where it hits the ground, move it off to the side, like so. And now let's adjust the curve on that. Let me give it cubic at first. Looks okay. Let's see what happens if I take the ease in out. All right, that looks okay. And now what we want to do is uh, animate the um, rotation of it. So I'm going to um, key the initial rotation value, go to where the X finishes, flip it upside down. And you can see that it's sort of messed up our Y keys, but that's okay. We can fix that in a minute. Let's see what that looks like. So linear interpretation or uh, interpolation on that looks pretty good, but I'm going to change it to cubic. Yeah, and just have it sort of ease out of the or ease out of that key here. Okay, that looks pretty good. All right, let's fix these Y keys. We need to scoot it up and then it's going to bounce and then return to the ground. Make sure I got that. Okay. That looks pretty good. 
Now you can see that the egg is still in front of the character. So let's animate the draw order. So at the highest point, let's just hit this um, draw rule button here and that'll automatically set a key for draw rule for the for the custom draw rule and when it's here uh, at the initial point of its movement we'll set or we'll select the normal draw rule and um, that'll set another key for here and those by default are already set to hold interpolation so we don't need to add any interpolation to that when it gets up here drops down behind the character okay so that looks pretty good um, the next thing we can do is animate the scale of this object because it's going behind the character so it'll be a little bit smaller now if I try to set or change the um, scale of this if you remember I have a scale constraint on here so the way that we're gonna actually be able to animate this is by opening up the scale constraint options here for the egg top group and you can see the strength value. Now the strength value is how much the constraint is going to affect the um, group. So right now it's set to 100%, which is good because we want it to be 100%, at least through that initial part of the animation. So I'm going to go ahead and key the strength here at the initial, um, the initial um, motion, the point of the initial motion there. And then when it gets to the top, I'm going to go ahead and set a scale or set the strength to zero. And now we have complete control of the, um, the uh, shape here or the group. So I'm going to scale it down when it gets over here. Okay. And once again, we're probably going to need to fix those X values. But to get it in the right spot, we're going to need that back shadow. So let's go ahead and animate that. So the back shadow, we've already set an opacity key for. So let me select that. And where does the egg turn over and start coming down? So probably about here. You can turn the opacity up a bit. And I'm going to set a hold key or set the uh, interpolation for the initial uh, back shadow opacity to hold so that it doesn't get any opacity until here, boom. And then when it hits the ground, we wanna turn the opacity all the way up. And then it's gonna bounce. Let's turn the opacity down a bit. And when it hits the ground again, go back up to full. And we'll set these to cubic interpolation. Okay, so you can see that the egg is a little bit off from the shadow, so that's no big deal. Let's just go here to where the initial X value is. Oops, wrong thing. Let me grab the egg top here. All right, let's scoot it over on the X. I don't know why there's another X there. Delete that. And I'm going to bring the Y down and then the bounce. Might be bouncing a little too high now. Copy and paste that Y key onto the end. And then let's take a look. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Um, for the sake of time, I won't animate any squash and stretch with this bit of the egg, but if you wanted to make it look better, um, you would want to squash it when it hits the ground here and maybe give it a little stretch here and then go back to its initial um, scale at the end. Okay, so now that we have this, let's start getting Donnie actually pushing the top of the egg off. So let's start here. Or actually, let's go a little bit more forward where the egg's actually off the character so we can see. And we'll start setting key, uh, keys here. So let me go into the egg bottom group and grab um, Donnie. And what I'm gonna do is go ahead and scale him down, rotate him, and I'm just trying to position him in that initial pose. So about right here, that looks pretty good. And then I'm just gonna drag that back to where the egg, the full egg and the cracked egg sort of um, switch out. Now I can sort of see him back here. So I'm just gonna move it down a little bit. Let's go forward. Move this key forward again. Cause I do kinda wanna 
make sure that he's leaned up against the back of that egg. And this this stuff is going to happen so fast that it's not necessarily um, crucial that you get it perfect. But, um, you know, I, I like to try and make my animations look as good as possible. Um, okay, so that looks pretty good. And now it's just poking out just a little bit. No big deal. Okay, so let's go to here. Or actually where the egg is stretched up the most. All right, and I'm going to set a key for um, his back being in the highest position because this is where he's actually kicking the egg off. All right, and then we'll go back to the initial motion here. Drag it down so I can't see it behind the egg anymore. Okay, it's going up. And then where it squashes out, which is about, I mean, it squashes out a, quite a bit of the time right here. We'll just drag his back down. I think we're going to need to create an initial scale key here. Yeah, we'll, we'll set an initial scale key here where he's at the highest point. And then here, we're going to need to scale this down. All right. Looks pretty good. We can even set a rotation key. So maybe we'll set an initial one here. We'll rotate it up here just a little bit. So it's kind of following the curvature of the egg there. And then we'll set another rotation key here. Rotate it forward like that. Okay. So that looks pretty good, but what we need to do now is adjust the timing and easing. Okay, so I'm gonna take the ease in out of this first key. All right, and it seems like we need that back to stay up just a little bit longer. Let's see if we can fix it with um, easing first. Just give it some more ease in. A little bit more ease out too. A little bit more explosive. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now the next thing we can do is animate the um, we can animate the feet. So let's go to the highest position here, which is this, and let's grab the we'll start with the front foot. I'm just gonna position it in the right spot. Set initial rotation and then grab the back foot and do the same thing here and here. All right, go to the start of the motion here, drag these feet down, maybe rotate them out a little bit. Okay, and then let's see what that looks like. That looks pretty good. All right, now let's go to where the character has slid down, which is there. And let's position the feet in their final spot here, which is going to sort of rest on the curves of the egg. So we'll go there. And then this one's going to kind of be behind it here. Rotate it out. All right, let's see what that looks like. Okay, obviously we need to add some easing, so I'm just going to select all of the front feet keys and all of the back feet keys. And remember, if you just hold shift and marquee select, you can add your selection there. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now let's have Donnie's body actually slide into place. So let's go to the highest point here. Um, actually, before we do that, let me, I think we've already set a key for Donnie. We have. All right. Perfect. So let's go to the highest point. Now, as the back is pushing up, we remember the, the body should be following the curvature of the egg. So this part of him should actually slide down and rotate just a little bit. So we'll slide him down this way and rotate it back like that. Now you can see that gives it a little bit of extra movement. So it actually looks like he's pushing up there and then let's have him slide into place here so I'm gonna go ahead and change the scale um, actually 
increase the scale just a little bit. I think you can be a little bit bigger. All right, so we've got a 105 there. Rotate him. And just get him in position. Like so. Okay. All right, let's match up the curves here. So let me grab the Donnie back curve for this spot and paste it onto here. Now that looks pretty good, but instead of actually having him come to rest in this next key right here, let's actually give it some follow through motion and have him swing forward just a little bit. So instead of being in his final spot, I'm gonna rock him forward. Probably even scoot him back a little bit like that. Yep. Okay. And then we can have him maybe when the egg goes back to its uh, its next scale key here, which is here. We can have him come back to rest in the final position. Now the feet are kind of in the way of the, the tooth there. So what I'm going to do is do the same thing with the feet. I'm going to rock the foot forward. And actually, I'm going to scoot the foot up just a little bit to there. All right, so now we can see that tooth. Um, it's just an extra part of the character. You want to be able to see that. All right, let me do the same thing with the back foot. I'm going to rock it forward. Because remember, we're going past the final... Um, pose here and then we'll bring everything back the next key just like this and like this that looks pretty good all right let's make sure we've got cubic on these oops um we need cubic there and all right let's see what that looks like okay that looks pretty good now what we're gonna do is add that um rocking into the egg like I talked about at the beginning of the animation. Now, the reason I didn't do it at first was because I wanted to get this character motion down here. And this will kind of inform the rocking of um, the egg. So let's start with the full egg here. I'm going to grab the full egg and egg bottom group. Sit set an initial scale and then just I'm gonna start rotating the egg back and forth here Give a little bit quicker shake there here and then let's go back to the original rotation here right where the eggs starting to crack All right, let's take a look at that and just make sure we're happy with it I want to make sure that I'm just putting this cubic curve on the rotation keys that we just set. Okay. Now let's take a look at that and see if we like it. Okay. So I do like that motion. Now we want to add a little bit of extra rotation right here where the character is leaning back this way so it's gonna rock the egg to the left like so oops I don't need the full egg I need to grab the egg bottom now rock it back this way we can probably actually scoot that out a little bit and control that with easing and then the character is gonna start coming down here so we can rock the egg forward past zero degrees let's go with six degrees and how much did we go this way nine so nine to six and let's rock them back the other way let's go to maybe negative five let's see what that looks like okay so it's not rocking as much as i'd like so we'll rock them back even more this way Let's try something extreme like that. And then we'll rock him forward pretty extreme like that. And then when he comes back this way, we can probably go to, let's go to nine. 
And then let's have him just rock the rest of the way through the animation. Let me take a look at this. I need a sec. Um, need to set the interpolation on these rotation keys really quickly. Okay. Like that. Now this probably isn't hanging on long enough. I think we would probably want to ease into this just a little bit more. So what we're going to do is I'm going to select all of these keys right here and scoot those forward. Actually, let's avoid the egg top keys. So I'm not going to grab those. Grab these, scoot it forward. All right, let's see what that looks like. Okay, that actually looks pretty good. Now, let's finish him rocking out. So we want to we want to um, gradually make the rocks take a little bit longer and get a little less extreme. So I'm actually bump this over to. 30 just to give myself a little bit easier time to calculate stuff. Okay, so it goes from 402 to 30. Let's just go 30 more this way. Um, make bottom. All right, so it's at nine degrees that way. Let's go with maybe nine degrees this way and then um, actually let's, let's not do nine. Let's do five and then go to the end of the animation so that it takes us a second to rock back the other way and go to negative five. Let's see what that looks like. Okay. Maybe that's a little too slow. Let's scoot this forward a little bit. Let's do, let's make it take 45 to get here to the next key. Make sure I've got all my easing set up on these rotation keys. I don't. Something here is linear. Okay. Okay, so now we've sort of rocked him back and forth and he's slowly gotten to the point where he's just going to be barely rocking. Now that's where we're going to go into the next animation in a second, but I think we've got a couple more things to do here. It is rocking back far enough here, right? Yep. Yep. Okay. So now let's actually have the feet uh, rock back and forth as well. So let me grab the front foot and the back foot. Oops. I don't mean to keep doing that. There we go. All right, let's have the feet rock up this way. Oop, nope. Let me do them one at a time. Okay. Rock up this way. Rock back this way. And then rock back the other way. All right, put cubic easing on those. We do the same thing with the back foot. I'm going to start here. Rock it up. Rock it forward. And rock it back. Okay. Put the easing on that. And let's preview it and see what that looks like. Okay, so that actually looks pretty good. Now, the last thing we need to do before we switch over to the animation is you can see we've got the... Um, the uh, eye closed uh, group here is still turned on. So I'm going to go to the beginning of the animation and go ahead and turn that off. And that should fix everything. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Now we can go into our last animation before um, doing the state machine. Now, instead of creating a new animation, what I'm going to do is duplicate the egg open animation and I'm going to rename this um, uh, let's call it open idle 
And now the next thing I'm going to do is go through and delete all of my keys that aren't the last key. So for example, I'm going to go through and delete all the keys here so that I just have these last two and then drag them to the front of the timeline. And now the reason that I'm going to do that is because this egg open animation is the ending pose of this is going to be the start of the open idle animation. Now I could go through and try to copy all of the last keys here um, and paste them at, or uh, drag them to the beginning of the timeline. But instead of doing that, like I said, I've um, duplicated the animation and I'm just, like I said, going through deleting all the initial keys here and dragging to the beginning of the timeline. Now I'm gonna jump into a time lapse because this is gonna take me a few minutes and just to save us a couple of minutes of time, um, I, will, uh, I will see you on the other side of that and then we'll get into the animation. Okay, so I've gone through and I've deleted out all the excess keys and left ourselves the last pose from the egg open animation. You can see at the end of the timeline at the egg open animation, we're in the same position as we are in the open idle animation. Okay, so now because I know this is going to be an idle animation, I'm going to change the animation type from one shot to loop and then change the duration because we don't need six seconds. Let's go with four seconds and that should give us enough time to uh, create two loops of the character rocking back and forth. So let's start with the egg bottom group and rotate that back and forth. So I'm going to go over to a second on the timeline and rotate them forward to five degrees because this is how much uh, the character was rocking at the end of the egg open animation. And then I'm gonna copy the first egg bottom key and paste that to two seconds on the timeline. Grab all the keys, copy and paste to create a second loop. And then just make sure that I have cubic interpolation on all of these keys. All right, so let's take a look at that and make sure it looks right. Okay, so the rocking looks pretty good. Now what we can do is uh, rock the feet um, to give the egg momentum to keep rocking back and forth. So let me select the feet really quickly. All right, front foot and back foot. Now they're already keyed here. So I'm gonna go over to one second, rotate them forward, and then grab the initial keys for both of the feet there and then paste those to two seconds, select all of the feet keys, and then just copy and paste those to get our second loop. Now, I'm gonna select all those keys and make sure that I have cubic interpolation on them. Some of them have linear. And let's preview that and see if that looks good. Okay, that looks pretty good. Um, so now what we want to do, uh, the reason that I incorporated two loops instead of just one is I want to, I want to add a blinking animation. Now I don't want the blink to happen, um, every single loop. I want it to happen every other loop and we could, we could extend this loop out and have three or four loops and have it somewhere in the middle. Um, but I'm just going to put it right here in the middle and then, um, we'll have a complete loop where he doesn't blink. All right. So to start the blinking. What I'm going to do is find his open eye and close it. So I'm going to do that by setting an initial scale key here. And I'm just, I've picked a random location on the um, timeline. It doesn't, it could be at the very beginning. It could be in the middle. It doesn't really matter. I'm just going to stick it right here in the middle. All right. So we did that at 45. I'm going to go um, five milliseconds ahead and squash it down like this and stretch it out a bit all right all right that looks pretty good let me add some curve to that all right so now what i'm going to do is copy these two scale keys here and paste them another um, five milliseconds ahead so that it'll stay closed for a second and then we'll go back up to open let's put cubic on all that and see what that looks like Okay, that looks pretty good, but this part right here, I'm not in love with, but that's why I made the eye closed group so that we can actually use that um, to um, replace this whenever the eye is closed. So what we're gonna do is first set um, some opacity keys here. 
So I'm going to set an opacity key for 100% at the beginning of the motion. And then when it gets to closed, I'm going to set it to zero. Make sure it stays zero to here and then return it to 100% at the end of the animation, just like that. Now we're gonna use, um, we're gonna use hold interpolation on a few of these. So I'm gonna, the first key I'm gonna set to hold so that it doesn't turn off until it gets to here. And then it'll keep that. And then let's once again, use the hold key and we'll probably need to adjust the opacity here. Um, backwards. So I'm going to adjust that back like this. Okay. Okay. So that looks pretty good. Now what we want to do is in this area where the uh, eye is turned off, we want to turn the eye closed group on. So let's just go to the beginning of the motion here. We'll set a, I think we already have an opacity key. We do. We have a 0% opacity key here. And we want it to go to 100% here. And it's already got hold on it. And we'll keep that to here. And then whenever this eye turns back on, we'll turn the closed eye group back off. Just like that. And we'll test that out and make some adjustments. I'm sure we're going to need to. Okay, that looks pretty good, but we can make it look even better by adding some um, stretch to this uh, eye closed group here. So that's what we're going to do. Let's set an initial X scale here. And then when it gets to here, actually, when it gets to here, let's stretch it out so that it's stretching as the eye closes. Actually, let's go here and then go back to the original scale here. Set cubic on those. Okay, that looks pretty good. Um, now, uh, we've got this final animation done. So let's go through and set it up all in the state machine. So I'm going to add a new state machine. And I'm going to drag the animations in the order that they're going to play. You don't necessarily need to do that, but I like to keep them in order. So let's go with um, intro idle, which is our first animation, then egg open and open idle. All right. So now that we have all of our animations on the graph, what we need to do is add some transitions so that the state machine knows the order of the animations that need to play. So I'm going to add a transition from entry to intro idle and Remember, entry is just, um, base, it represents where, where the state machine is going to start. And I've added that transition into intro idle. And now I need to add a transition from intro idle to egg open and one from egg open to open idle, just like that. Okay, now when we, we preview the state machine, you can see that it goes all the way to the open idle. And that's because we haven't uh, set up any inputs or conditions to tell the state machine uh, which animation should play when. So let's go through and do that. So I'm gonna add an input, and the inputs are gonna be the controls that you use to control the state machine here in the editor, but they're also gonna be what's uh, used to control the state machine at runtime as well. So um, we're gonna use a trigger and we'll rename this open. Okay, so now that we have our input, we need to um, put the input under a condition. So we don't want the egg to open until we've told it to. So we're gonna use this input here and go to this transition between intro idle and egg open, add a condition, and we're gonna get set the condition to open. So when we hit the open trigger, it will finish playing this animation and go into the egg open animation. So let's take a look at that. Okay, so it's playing the intro idle animation. And then when we hit open, it still goes to open idle. Now the reason it's still going to open idle is we need to tell the uh, state machine to play this entire animation, the entire egg open animation before going to open idle. So let's select the transition from egg open to open idle and set an exit time. 
Now, the exit time is going to tell the state machine how much of the animation needs to play. Now, there's a couple different ways you can do this. You can add in milliseconds, seconds, or a percent. Um, I'm just going to tell the state machine to, to transition after playing 100% of the animation. So let's test the state machine out again and see if it actually works right this time. Okay, so our intro idle is working. I hit the open animation. It's playing the egg open animation. And it goes straight into the rocking animation. And that's, that's exactly what we want it to do. Okay, so that's gonna be it for this video. Um, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, feel free to leave a comment in the video and we'll try to address those as quickly as possible, especially if it's something that you wanna learn um, you know, we'd like to make sure that we're addressing all of y'all's questions. Um, if you followed along with the video, be sure to share your creation on the community because we'd love to see what you're working on. Um, with that being said, thanks for joining us and we'll see you in the next one.